Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Les George MK3 folder. This is a USA made folding knife. Uh, I'm gonna classify as mid-tech. Uh, if you're wondering, if you're not familiar with the Les George Custom and Mid-Tech knives, like where does this rank in the world of knives? This is right up there with Hinderer knives, uh, Demco knives, when we're talking about the USA made ones, not the 8025s made in Taiwan, but the actual USA Demcos, uh, Chris Reeve knives, etc. It's that territory. A lot of you actually might be more familiar with the VECP. Um, some of these knives might look super familiar or the name Les George will look uh, sound super familiar because he collaborates a lot with other companies um, to uh, make uh, production models that are manufactured in various different parts of the world. But what we're looking at today is an actual USA made Les George mid-tech and what comes with it is definitely a, uh, a price tag to match, right? So just uh, keep that in mind. These are a little bit hard to get. Um, these are uh, definitely lesser known, um, you know, to the vast majority of the knife world, and they are very, very small batch. Um, this comes as a shock to some people when they go to check and they find that they're out of stock. How can this be? It's because these are small batch and made in the United States and not manufactured in China by the thousands. So they are expensive, but they sell very quickly. I am certain that he will make more at some point. In any case, I will link this right down below so that you guys can check out this listing and other Les George knives. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to, I'm actually gonna share his YouTube, at Lucifer's Blade, um, please make sure and follow. He's a great guy. Uh, he lends me a bunch of stuff, uh, or loans me a bunch of stuff for content. Um, so you can see here, he's got shorts and videos of the highest iPhone quality, which sounds intriguing, but make sure that you follow him um, at Lucifer's Blade on YouTube. This will, of course, be going back to him. I don't get to keep it. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length is coming in at, it's just shy of it. It's, it's actually about 8.35 inches. Blade length is 3.75, cutting edge is 3.65. Very good ratios on this knife. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. There we go. Uh, definitely mm, about the same overall length as the Rat 1. Let's put it up against the Taiwan made AD 20.5. Again, this is not the USA version that I was referring to. Um, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and maybe the Spyderco Para 3. Sorry, we'll line those up here real quick. Definitely closer to the size of the PM2. And then finally, I think probably the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Benchmade Bugout. How is the action on this knife? If you are familiar with these USA Demco mid-techs, some people in here might actually be familiar with customs, which I'm, I'm ashamed to say I've never actually handled a Les George custom. These knives operate so unbelievably smooth on washers, and that is actually the case here. We're looking at what, man, that scared the crap out of me. My, <laughs> I'm gonna leave this in the video. My 80 slot Pelican case just closed by itself and I I thought the world was ending. <laughs> it was it for me. My brain told me, you're dead, you're done. There's no more metal complex. <laughs> My heart is pounding right now. Stupid thing. Okay, anyways, the action is very, very good. The Les George VECP, this is now the version three, also runs on washers. Now they have versions of this knife that run on bearings, but anybody who's handled a Les George knife in this caliber uh, running on washers, will they'll usually all describe them the same way. It's a lot like what happens if you mix a Hinderer XM18 running on bearings with a uh, Chris Reeve uh, Sabenza or Umnum's on. It really is like the perfect combination of those two things. You can see here my um, VECP V3 user is very smooth. This guy somehow brand new is actually even smoother. I cannot explain 
the buttered glass feeling of this. And you'd think it'd be floppy, loosey-goosey. No, these things are solid. Unbelievable. No lock stick. Very smooth. Very consistent. There's something about a Les George mid-tech that just feels different. The titanium feels different. The, uh, the disengagement and the smoothness and the detent, it all just feels very less Georgie. I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. And to a lot of people looking at this, you know, the, a, a lot of people who don't know better would just describe this as metal knife, right? I've seen many things that look like that. It's not until you pick it up and handle it that you notice that there is a difference. And anybody who has handled this stuff, like I said, will tell you the same thing. It is distinct. It is definitive. And the uh, MK3 is no exception. I keep saying that I don't like thumb discs. And then all of a sudden, like everybody in the whole world figured out exactly how to place them and how to tune detents uh, with them. This thing operates flawlessly. I, I looked at this. I looked at a picture of it and thought... I don't think I'm going to like that. And then I get it in, and it, I, I'll still say it's not my favorite profile in the world, but my God, it operates so well. It's just beautifully well made, right? I mean, it's it reminds me of what it means to pay more money for a true American product. You, when, when you get, like, the execution is there, this is what gets people to go, you know what? I'm actually okay with that multi-hundred dollar purchase because this really does feel that much better than a lot of the competition surrounding it. So if you've ever been on the fence about Les George, I would say don't be because they really, it really does feel incredible. I'm very happy with the action. I think it deploys very well. Let's do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's really not all that thick. In fact, I think it actually might be at, it's about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, this guy closed is actually shorter than the PM2 with a much longer blade. And it's not that much bigger than the Para 3. It's kind of in between. Height-wise, nowhere near as tall. It's actually going to be a pretty darn good uh, pocket experience. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this. What are the materials? Titanium. And then we have a machine satin magna cut blade how is it being heat treated i don't know maybe i missed it on his website but i feel like les george in the past has always talked about what he's getting you know his various steels to i know that he used cts xhp which is amazing and underused i really wish companies would start using xhp more often um but everybody's going to magna cut and that's fine because magna cut actually is a really great steel there's a wide range of appropriate hardnesses as laren thomas the creator of the steel has said um so what i'm seeing from the community is that the general accepted range is like anywhere from 60 to 64 but a lot of the community prefers it because of the benefits of edge retention higher which is par for the course right so I don't know, but I trust Les George because he has always made a good product. I don't have the equipment that is required to test the actual hardness, um, so I don't know. There are other creators who can do that, um, and I think that it's great that they can't love them. Knives can do that. I always think that that's great that he can uh, provide that service to the community. But just based on Les George's track record, I you know I would assume that it's it's done um, well or to the um, expectations of the general community. So we have Magna Cut and we have Titanium. And then on the inside here, I don't think we have any weight reduction. No, not that it really needs it. Um, I, I would venture to guess that this will come in similar to the VECP, maybe five, five and a, five and a quarter? Less, uh, 4.97 ounces, okay? Um, obviously not uh, you know the ratios that everybody's gonna look for, but it is balanced right behind the pivot. So it really doesn't, it really doesn't feel all that heavy for a full titanium knife of this size. Let's go ahead real quick and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Couldn't find my driver there for a second. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. These things have giant, I mean, for for a, a pocket knife, they have giant fasteners. Um, well, the pivot is. I think the pivot is a T20. Yeah. T20 for the pivot. And then these guys down here, I know on my VECP, they are T10. But is it the same with this? No, I don't think it is. You can see here, mine are T10. I think these are actually just T8. We'll check them real, real quick. And that's fine. Oh, got out a T7. Who the heck uses T7? 
It's so weird when I find a knife that's like using T7 or T9 screws. It's just bizarre. Oh, this stupid bit. I've been complaining about this bit for months. I can never find where it actually says. So we have T8, yeah. And we got screw heads on both sides. It didn't actually used to be like the VECP just goes right through to the titanium. It's fine either way. You got two fasteners here. We got T6 screws for the pocket clip, but that's okay. Most three-hole custom clips will work. You see a lot of people doing the custom steel flame stuff with Les George knives. It'll work here. He also sells his own custom clips and stuff like that. So that's great. Very, very simple knife to take apart and put back together. Um, the fact that we have minimal hardware, uh, the fact that we are running on phosphor bronze washers, all of that, it just means that this knife will be unbelievably simple to service. There are a lot of people who think that, um, you know, with a certain tier of knives, phosphor bronze washers should not come into play. I don't know what caused people to think this. Um, a lot of people just think like at a certain price point, we should no longer see washers that like the only, you know, acceptable pivot hardware is bearings after a certain price point. If you think that, stop thinking that. That's untrue and absurd. We have Civivi knives that cost less than $50 that use bearings, right? Uh, bearings is just a, uh, when it comes to the maker, right? It's, it's a preference for the model. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't really like to see nylon washers in there. But phosphor bronze, the benefit is um, they uh, are self-lubricating and they do a much better job of keeping debris out of the pivot. So when you can get something as smooth as this um, MK3 on washers, in my opinion, they absolutely outclass bearings. Bearings will usually offer better action, but they don't do a great job of keeping debris out of the pivot. So sometimes it gives you that sense of luxurious smoothness that you, yes, you seasoned enthusiasts only. Only the most seasoned of enthusiasts can understand and appreciate. Eh. No, that's wrong. Correct, correct your way of thinking. Um, I, uh, I'm always pumped to see super smooth phosphor bronze action. Um, so it's nice to get it here. Uh, let's, uh, measure the blade stock thickness and then move on into the old meat and potatoes. Blade stock thickness. These knives tend to be 155. I'm guessing that's what we're going to find here. And nope, it's actually a little bit thinner. 147 thousandths. Isn't my VECP thicker? Well, I'm just, I'm just dumb guys. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> they were thicker. Okay. So meat and potatoes time. Uh, some people love this more, oh, I don't know. Should we we call it a like a combat knife profile, right? Kind of reminds me of some Emerson knives, right? Of the profile, not all Emerson knives, but some of the profiles and especially how this, you know, sort of tapers out right here. Ergonomically, it is very comfortable except for one thing, the bill on the clip. Clip bills are bothersome. This could be half the height and it would be essentially a perfect clip, right? Um, it's the same thing on the um, the VECP version 3. I mean, I think it's exactly the same clip. Uh, really, that's the only thing that bothers me about the ergonomics. It's going right into the middle of my hand. Um, but still, even with that being the case, it is very comfortable, extremely comfortable. I kind of wish we had a little bit of jimping back here or up here, but okay, it's not there. The lock-in is still pretty good, and my goodness, these edges, everything is so well knocked down. It's beautiful. There's nothing sharp. Outside of the bill of the clip, there is nothing sharp on this knife, uh, except for, of course, uh, the, the edge. Um, the blade, I will always prefer, I'm wiping it off here, I will always prefer a tumbled finish, and I think Les George does a great one. I'll always prefer this finish. It wouldn't surprise me if this knife is actually offered in that same finish. I know that they do make DLC versions. Um, I have the DLT listings linked in the description so you can look at at least the versions that have dropped there. Um, but as far as satin finishes go, this is about as beautiful as you could hope for for a machine finish. It really is nice and crisp. We don't have any belt burn, which kind of turns your blades yellow if you have knives that look a little bit more yellow or gold than other 
uh, machine satin finish knives. That's belt burn usually. Um, and I just think that looks kind of gross. It kind of looks like pee pee. I don't like it. I would prefer if they're going to do it, it looks like this. We got a nice big swedge running out to the tip, and I think that looks really nice. It is absolutely identical on both sides. So a mid-tech knife, um, usually the definition there is a knife that has some hand elements and some uh, machine elements, right? What percentage? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of, it, dep it depends on the model, right? But this is not a custom knife in the sense that it was not entirely handmade, but it definitely takes longer to create than a production, like a full on production knife. So Les George has always labeled these as mid tech, but I don't know the exact processes that go into it, right? We have a tumbled flat here. We've got a little little textured disc up there, which I'm sure is customizable and replaceable. Got a really nice, evenly sharpened blade. And while it, it is, re it's not thick. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's not as, quite as thin as an open L, but it will absolutely slice. I'm sure that Lucifer will forgive me um, if I s just give a little piece of paper a, a quick slice of Ruski here. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said it that way. I apologize for that. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. The... The factory edge is sharpened very well. Now this doesn't really prove much because obviously it depends on what you're cutting. The geometry of the blade is not overly thick, but it's not overly thin either, right? If you're cutting rope, wood, rubber, cardboard, right, of varying thicknesses, you might have a slightly different experience. But overall, this blade will poke and it will slice. That thumb disc is absolutely in the cutting path if you are cutting straight down, which in some cases, it's, it's going to be the case, right? So that will get in the way. Um, most of us kind of cut at an angle because you're drawing the material into the belly of the blade. But if you do cut straight down or really close to your hand trying to get like kind of like a power cut into something, then you might run into that thumb disc. So just, you know, be cognizant of that. It says George and Magna Cut, and then it doesn't say anything on the other side, which is fine. I think that looks really, really good. Um, we've got a couple of lines. I kind of like that he did that because otherwise, you know, they do textured versions every now and then, right? Um, but I like that he put a couple of lines in here just to give it a little bit more character. Um, I, I wouldn't surprise me if there's just a plain version. Uh, and like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if they do like the weird spirally textured versions that they do periodically, right? Um, that's, that's something that you can probably expect to see at some point. How often are these knives available? Man, Les George knives are just like they're there and then you don't see or hear anything for sometimes over a year. And that's just the case sometimes, right? I mean, the VECP button locks have been trying to get that. I've missed three drops of those things. I just can't get them. The people who are interested in these knives buy them up super fast. And Les George can't keep up. There's always, there's no shortage of people going, why doesn't he just make more? He should take the money he made and put it into production so he can make more of them. Why am I the only one that thinks of that? You're not. You're not the only one. I'm sure that he does pump that back in, but it's not like he can just expand to be the size of CRKT or Kershaw or Civivi. Just, oh, it doesn't work like that, right? Um, so I think it's just him. If it's not just him, it's him and like maybe one other person. It is not cheap to just expand a business like this in the United States. So I'm sure that he's operating at maximum capacity and at the same tr time trying to innovate and come up with new things that'll keep people interested, right? Um, so that's why they go fast. There is no magic simple thing. I understand it's kind of a, you know, people like to oversimplify things so that they can justify complaining about them, but that's just not going to be the case, right? Um, I, uh, you know, it's, it's a reason that we, we don't see um, a bajillion hinderer-sized companies, right? Hinderer Knives did things similarly and then actually managed to expand. If it were super easy, we would see a ton of of American companies blowing up and expanding super duper fast, but it just doesn't work that way. So um, these will continue to be difficult to get. They will continue to sell out quickly. And if you want something like this, you just have to be there and be ready to go. This is the name of the game. And it's been this way for decades in the knife world. If you just stumbled into the knife world a week ago and you're upset that there's things you can't get, Welcome to the party. Get in line. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that sounds brutal, but that is just the way that it is. And um, it, uh, it, will, it will continue to be that way, especially with American uh, companies like Les George, who, you know, create really quality stuff. Uh, and there's, you know, enough people interested that it, it makes them hard to get. So 
Anyways, um, we have not a whole lot else going on here. We got a little lanyard bar back here, so lanyard people rejoice. I have no idea why he decided not to mill out the three holes just so that the pocket clip could go on the other side. There's plenty of room. He really should have done that. The pocket carry depth is good enough for me. Uh, some people prefer it super deep, and for some reason, some people prefer shallow carry. I have no idea. Those are the same guys who like tip down. Ooh, tell me how you feel about that down in the comment section. Um, the bill is just, like I said, too much. But in and out of the pocket is a breeze. No problem there. And that's largely because of the bill ramp. I'd rather have a little bit more shallow. Still have the ability to get it in and out of the pocket. I'll give you a great example. The MXG Deep Carry Clip. Much better, much more shallow, and just as easy to get in and out of the pocket. There is no steel lock bar insert. Sometimes that's the case. There is no over travel stop either. But that pocket clip is, well, the truth is, is the pocket clip on this guy is not sitting on the relief cut. I didn't actually notice that. I think that's actually a little bit of a problem. Not a huge problem, but it is a problem. You can see here on the VECP version 3, the pocket clip actually rests where the lock bar will eventually contact it once you push up far enough. Um, and the other thing <laughs> I always forget about, this has the LBS disc. So uh, it doesn't actually even need it. I forgot that it was hidden under there. This has the lock bar stabilizer disc, which prevents the bar from pushing into the frame and bending out this way, right? That's a rare thing. Very, very rare. I think it was Rick Hinderer who told a story from his firefighting days where there was a time where they actually had a, a vehicle that was turned upside down and somebody was trapped inside it um, and their, their seatbelt was stuck. And he got out one of his knives that he made, uh, a frame lock, long time ago. Um, and uh, cut them free from their seatbelt. And when he went to disengage it, there was so much adrenaline pumping, he actually overbent the lock bar. There was nothing preventing the lock bar from bending over. He bent it over, rendering the knife inoperable because it couldn't, um, it couldn't uh, lock out anymore, which is why he invented the LBS disc. If you didn't know that, that's the, the hinder LBS disc was the, the invention there. All right. So that's obviously rare. I mean, people aren't like pumping with massive amounts of adrenaline all the time and bending out lock bars. It's not something that you hear about. And obviously lock bars without over travel discs have existed for a very long time without this being a consistent reported issue. However, I like, I don't know about you, I like knowing that there's no way that's going to happen. Normally, the pocket clip sits halfway on the frame and halfway on the lock bar. And it acts as not a perfect over travel stop, but it adds enough resistance that even in extreme scenarios, it's unlikely. In this case, it's sitting halfway where the relief cut is. So that lock bar never actually contacts it. You would bend this lock bar out far before it actually got to the point where it was touching the pocket clip. I wish that there was some sort of over-travel prevention, but it's not a deal breaker because there's still enough tension here that I think it would be, you would almost have to be deliberately bending it out for that to be an issue. Um, no lock bar insert, but we don't need that because the lock face is carbonized. Les George does such a good job of this. There is no lock stick whatsoever, which is usually, if we're gonna see lock stick, we, we see it a lot more often on um, raw titanium faces than titanium with a lock bar insert, but there's nothing here. And to my absolute delight, it is so solid. No movement whatsoever. Um, the stop pin is located in its traditional spot. Nice, fairly robust pin. No shouldering, but it doesn't need it. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Like I said, no lock stick, no pivot lash. Very consistent, extremely just buttery consistency in there. And a nice, it's not very audible, but the detent is solid and um, it will uh, allow you to deploy this blade, you know, with ease. I think it's the proper tuning. Um, I would call it a medium, maybe even a medium light, but it works with the thumb disc, right? Um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that, about it. I mean, unless you like do parkour for a living. And then of course we have dead perfect centering with zero detent lash. So I think the base price of these, much like other Les George knives, comes in at $425. Now for a lot of people, that's gonna be a big wet canoe paddle to the face. But for people who know this territory, that's really not bad at all. Considering, I mean, these things, as far back as I can remember, this was a decade ago. The I remember these being 400. So after all of the inflation and everything, he's still making these things in the United States. 
right? It's amazing. It's like hinder knives. People come out of the duct work when they're new. Oh my gosh, four on for not right. But I mean, if you've been around for a bit, number one, you know what it costs to make this stuff this way. I'm not talking like mostly made in the USA and then we outsource everything else, right? If you're comparing to other USA companies that have knives priced half as much or, you know, uh, a, a quarter as much and they claim USA made, um, they're not disclosing exactly how much of that is made in the United States and how much of it is not. That's It's not charity. It's not they're just better. It's... No, it costs them less because there are elements that are not totally disclosed, right? Um, and it, it varies from company to company. But there's a reason that you see a lot of this stuff right around that $400 territory because that's legitimately what it costs to do, small batch, right? Um, it's just in order for them to actually make a profit and, and uh, you know, generate income from this. Yes, absolutely, right? So the fact that Les George has barely changed his prices at all in at least 10 years is pretty amazing. This is a really good knife. To a lot of people, it's going to be too boring. There's just not going to be enough here. If you like USA-made knives, I think this is this is like a dream knife for a lot of people. And uh, in my opinion, is absolutely recommendable. The profile is not going to be for everybody, right? But the quality is there. This is USA, you know, knife territory at its best. And I am a gigantic fan of this knife. I just, I didn't really think that I was going to like it as much, but I do. I, I think that this is excellent. This is going to be in my recommended knives playlist, which it's rare for me to uh, openly recommend a knife um, at this price point. Um, but I think, um, you know, for people who are actually spending money in this territory, uh, this is definitely going to be an attractive, uh, you know, purchase. Uh, and I think it'll serve you well, whether you're a collector or if you're somebody who, you know, actually takes all your stuff out and uses it. This is a fantastic user and it is built to use. I just wish it had an over-travel stop. That's going to be pretty much it for me today. Thanks again from uh, thanks again to uh, Lucifer for loaning this to me. It'll go back to him. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.